All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sonko here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be talking about XRP, which is pretty crazy because I usually just don't even bother talking about XRP. But fair enough, there's a great opportunity on the horizon for everybody. And I just want to say I apologize for not making a video for a while. I, My wife and I had a newborn baby on the 15th of November. And those first couple weeks... Those first couple of weeks are pretty, pretty tough. So I was sort of avoiding making a video for a little while. But XRP up to 61 cents. Why? Why is XRP up to 61 cents? Is there some new announcement? Is there some new partnership? Eh, not quite. There's an airdrop on the horizon and it's a pretty easy one. So, hey, it's free money. Cue like the free real estate meme. I don't feel like editing in, but you get what I'm saying. Free real estate. Come on, look it up. Flare proposes new bridge to allow XRP to be used on Ethereum. So uh, this article is a little bit old, August 27th, but we'll get into how you can participate in this airdrop and perhaps make yourselves some relatively free cash. There's really only a small downside to it, only a small downside to it uh, that we'll get into in just a moment. And before we get into this main article about the Flare airdrop, I just want to say uh, that anybody out there that is interested in 200 plus units of Sapphire RX 470 4 gigabyte mining variant graphics cards, I can get a hold of 200 plus for you. So if that is something that's interesting to you, if you want to become a miner and continue on the Sapphire legacy, they are legit. Uh, give me an email shout out. The email is in the description below. Say, hey, I would like to buy some and I'll hook you up with the seller. Um, trust me, uh, it's legit. Come on, Mr. Sako wouldn't sell you down the river. 200 plus graphics cards and you can get them. Mm, saucy cheap, trust me. Flare proposes new bridge, so let's check this out. Ripple, partner with Flare Network, revealed details of a proposed new bridge connecting XRP with the Ethereum blockchain, which could be pretty big with Ethereum 2.0 coming out. A Ripple CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, and the XRP army have expressed support for the two-way bridge to bring the ecosystem together. I should have joined the XRP army a long time ago. Apparently, I missed out on that recruiting call. The trustless bridge will allow XRP on the Flare network, known as FXRP, to be used within the Ethereum network while providing a scaling platform for Ethereum tokens and applications. Flare is a network that integrates the Ethereum virtual machine in order to provide advanced smart contracts on the XRP network. The proposal, which needs to be approved by the Ripple Foundation, although they pretty much work together, and uh, again, this uh, article was uh, a few months back, and now they're doing the airdrop, so I'm pretty sure it's approved. Uh, will be the group's first governance proposal and has mostly been met with positive feedback from the community with Twitter um, commenting. As soon as it's done, I'm moving all my apps and smart contracts over. Some users question whether a connection to Ethereum was ever needed at all. It will only slow down uh, the Flare network. Ethereum's fees have hit $99 for some DeFi users, although this was when the DeFi craze, again, it's an August 27th article, um, which isn't the case now. And with Ethereum 2.0 having officially launched, or at least a phase zero on December 1st, um, I don't think it's going to be slowing down the Flare network at all. Although, Again, Ethereum 2.0 needs at least a couple of year, more years of uh, development in different phases. <clears throat> so how do we get this? So officially Coinbase uh, is supporting it. KuCoin is supporting it. Probably many other exchanges. I would imagine Binance. I would imagine you can do this with, with a ledger or something like that as well. However, uh, it's going to be on December 12th. So you have opportunity to go out and grab XRP, whether you have to actually go out and buy it or whether maybe you have it sitting around in, in a wallet or on some exchange or something like that. Make sure your exchange actually participates in this. Um, so one is KuCoin, one is Coinbase. Uh, and again, I'm sure there's many others, but it would uh, do you well uh, to make sure that your particular exchange does support this. So on uh, December 12th at 6 o'clock this is how kucoin will handle it at um 0600 on december 12th kucoin is going to suspend the xrp deposit and withdrawal services so you need to get them in well before december 12th so at least december 11th um at 0800 um kucoin will take a snapshot of the user's position of xrp the exact snapshot will be announced by flare network um 
and the deposit and withdrawal of extra people reopen after the snapshot. Number of Spark airdrops obtained by users equal the number of Sparks obtained by KuCoin. So depending on how much KuCoin receives from this will be given out. So it's it, it, it's supposed to be a one-to-one -one holding, but they're just sort of explaining, I think, in a more convoluted manner than they really need to, but fair enough. Um, so the snapshot will include XRP balances and main accounts, trading accounts, margin accounts, except for lending and borrowing loans. The Spark airdrop drops will be distributed to the user's trading account. The trading service of Spark will only be opened after Spark goes through the listing review process of KuCoin. The opening hours of Spark deposit and withdrawal services will be announced separately. So you won't be able to trade Spark at first, um, and Spark will actually supposedly be coming live around early 2021. So somewhere in the first quarter of the next year, you'll be getting your Spark coins. Now, um, how much are these going to be worth? Well, it's supposedly a one-to-one -one ratio with XRP. So I would imagine that they're going to be a similar price of XRP. Um, when, when they first actually come onto exchanges, I'm sure it'll be at varying times that Coinbase will probably be last because they just always are for some reason. Um, and there will probably be a pump in the price of the coin at first uh, and followed by a dump you know, of people selling off their initial uh, their initial airdrop. But uh, if this even has 10 or 20% of the value of XRP, uh, that's essentially 10 or 20% free cash money. I mean, it's free real estate. So, um, you know, here's Coin, uh, Coinbase's explanation. Coinbase plans to support Flare Network's upcoming airdrop. And they were very late to this, December 5th, as, a, as opposed to... Um, the 11th or no no the 25th of november so yeah coinbase late to the show as usual for whatever reason even though they're a gigantic exchange i, I really never got that yet um if you are an eligible customer holding an XRP balance, what that, whatever that means, um, on coinbase or coinbase pro on the snapshot date and the time of december 12th zero hundred hours so the moment of december 12th is when this uh, most of these exchanges are going to be taking the snapshot apparently kucoin is a little bit later in december 12th either way i would have your 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 xrp on one of these exchanges or at least in order and wherever you want to receive the airdrop uh, well before december 12th um and again i was talking about how there's only like one downside to this and the one downside is say you buy in now at 60 at 61 cents um what i would do is definitely uh, uh, you know once your snapshot has been taken on whatever exchange or whatever service you happen to use um then it would be a good idea if you just happen to buy xrp just to get this drop it might be a good idea to sell uh, just because there's going to be, th th I think the only reason why the price is at 61 cents right now is to actually capture this airdrop. So the idea is to buy in at 61 cents and hopefully you sell around there. Even if you miss a couple cents, if it goes down to 58 or 59 cents, something like that, um, hopefully the flare airdrop that comes later uh, will actually make up and beyond for that profit. So just watch your trading when it comes to this, uh, because I think after the snapshot is taken, there may... <laughs> xrp army don't hurt me there may be a drop in xrp because there won't be a lot of reason for people that normally don't hold um xrp to, to just simply dump it uh so that is what you have to watch out for that is that is the the, the key in this um so at 1200 uh the amount of spark you receive depends on how much xrp you had in your account at the time of the snapshot sends and receives will be disabled yada yada so again december 12th make sure you have your xrp all settled at least on the uh, december 11th or at the latest uh, but moving on to different news microstrategy buys more bitcoin at average price above 9,400 ish that's a big one so microstrategy was the company that sort of I, I think they liquidated a lot of their other funds essentially into bitcoin or at least transferred a lot of their funds they aren't in, in like an actual investment company <clears throat> however they just basically took all of their funds and bought bitcoin with it and now they bought an additional uh, amount of bitcoin of 50 million dollars worth so again these big institutions these big companies are pouring into bitcoin right now i think the only reason we haven't gone over 20,000 is just due to the simple fact that there's probably a ton of sell orders piled up at 20,000. And do you blame everybody? I mean, three years ago, it reached 20,000. And a lot of people missed that mark because it basically hit 19,800 or so or 900, depending on the exchange, and then immediately dumped from there. So people are probably a little afraid that it's not going to go over 20,000. So they're probably setting a lot of sell orders around 19,900 to 20,000, maybe even. And it has to sort of chip away at those standing sell 
orders that aren't moving. So they're going to have to chip away and chip away. And it's going to keep forcing it back down and then coming back up. And then once it chips away at those sell orders, there's really nothing stopping it after 20,000 except for maybe then 21,000. Uh, so that's probably the situation right now. Uh, however, uh, we are really hovering at 19,000. It, it's really showing that we're not going any lower, that if we start to go lower, the, these companies come in and they buy $50 million at a time. And 50 million compared to the market cap of Bitcoin, again, not too crazy, uh, but it just goes to show that there are a lot of people waiting on the sidelines for any kind of dip. I don't think a, a big dip is gonna occur again. And if it does, it might just be a seasonal or a holiday dip, like maybe December or January type thing. Um, but I think there's a lot of money waiting on the sidelines now. I think that's the big difference between 2017, where it was just like average people in Wales essentially buying it. And now it's not just Wales and average people, but it's actual institutions and businesses. So the company paid uh, 50 million for more of the world's largest crypto at an average price of 19,427 which is really high but fair enough it said in a filing to the US Securities and Exchange Commission MicroStrategy now has about 40,824 bitcoins in total so nothing compared to grayscale but still pretty big bitcoin on monday surpassed its december 2017 record high of 19,511 which is simply and utterly false according um so I don't know where they got that model. Hell, you know what? Let's just check that real quick. Let's let's see if that's true, because it's not. I know it's not. Uh, Bitcoin hit nearly twenty thousand, and this is just coin market cap. So this is sort of an average, of course, of of the exchanges at the time. But as we can see here, um, we we see even twenty thousand one dollar here. So that might have just been candling, uh, or excuse me, shadowing of candles on exchanges um, at the time. But uh, I, I really don't think we're at all time high until we break over twenty thousand again. That that's just my personal opinion. Uh, Twelve thousand five hundred eleven is just completely false. Uh, I've heard other articles where it's like, oh, we broke our all time high at nineteen thousand. And seven hundred and eight eighty three dollars or something it, it's I, I just don't think that's true uh but uh, fair enough i mean it kind of is because 2017 was uh, to, to be totally fair kind of false um it was really just like bitconnect and various icos and stuff crypto kitties Anyway, moving on to Grayscale. This is an updated Grayscale status. Uh, and I do these in the past videos and we can see just how much. I remember when I first started doing these, uh, Grayscale owned about $6 billion worth of Bitcoin. I looked at it again uh, a couple weeks later, they were at seven, eight, nine billion. Now it's $10.4 billion worth of Bitcoin they have. They have $10.4 billion worth of Bitcoin. Uh, the Bitcoin cash is still just sitting stay at uh, $53 million. Um, so apparently they're not, they're just, they ain't having that. Uh, Grayscale's Ethereum is 1.6 billion. Uh, their Ethereum Classic is still really not moving too much at 78 million, and uh, the other one's not moving too much either. They're not really concerned about the other ones. They just see how well Bitcoin is doing. Uh, they are talking about Ethereum a lot more as well, so I think they'll be buying a lot more of that as time goes on as well. Speaking of Ethereum, there's I think there's well over 1 million uh, Ethereum now in the deposit contracts for um, validator nodes. Um, and once we get to about 3 million, I think it goes down to about 10.45% APY for your staking rewards. And um, after that, um, it'll be you know, going down even even more as, as more millions go into it. But what we have to understand is that there's really only like 110, I think, million um, Ethereum in existence, uh, so 113 million, and there's already like oh, well over a million. So uh, by the time there's 10 million, I think it's um, you know like five percent rewards or something like that. So and that's nearly 10 percent. I mean, um, you know, of course, just short of that, but but you know about 10 percent. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of Ethereum <clears throat> locked up in those deposit contracts, in those validator notes for quite some time. Uh, Coinbase will be supporting uh, the validator notes and staking. However, uh, Coinbase says that they will provide liquidity for you. So there, there's a weird thing with that. So basically, if you put your Ethereum into their uh, staking pool, uh, they're going to be making staking nodes out of it, 32 at a time. Uh, but if you want to escape from that, they will just give you some free Ethereum that they happen to have in cold or hot wallets and let you just go away and stop your staking rewards. So in some ways, uh, you know, Coinbase is still locking up Ethereum as you're giving it to them to stake it. Uh, and in other ways, uh, it's not helping as much because it's still they still have a lot of free Ethereum in their wallets that they'll, they will be giving you uh, to get away from that. 
So $10.4 billion in grayscale and counting, period. So it's going up. Uh, moving on to some interesting news. Uh, it's not too big, uh, but Pizza Hut now accepts Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in Venezuela. However, uh, it's still pretty cool, um, but it's not directly through them. Uh, of course, um, it's uh, it seems Venezuelans were asking for Bitcoin or at least some sort of innovation, and Pizza Hut was eager to listen. Uh, General Director of Venezuelan Operations told uh, local news site El Axioma I don't know, uh, that the franchise was looking to evolve and go to the same pace as a technological innovation as the partnership with crypto buyer will allow Pizza Hut to accept Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dash, Litecoin, uh, Binance Coin, USDT, um, pretty much anything, and crypto buyer's uh, native token as well. Moreover, it's not an isolated experiment and a decision effective in all Pizza Hut locations in Caracas, Maracay, Maracaibo, uh, and Borcasimito. Mm, I got that one, I bet. If you slow that down, if you slow the footage down, that was, I said that totally correctly. I mean, my Spanish is pretty good. However, they're not accepting, um, they're not accepting it uh, directly. Other stories that, jo that joined the crypto fever are Burger King, the Intercontinental and uh, Tamanaco Hotel, the Venezuelan gas stations accepted. So, um, you know, various little nation, uh, little nation states, um, you know, and, and the corporations within them, uh, sort of the franchises are, are starting to accept Bitcoin. Uh, again, it's through crypto buyers. So it's basically like you give them crypto and then they change it into fiat. And of course, Pizza Hut gets the fiat instead of crypto. Uh, but it's, it's still... Uh, pretty cool innovation, and I can dig it. Uh, but either way, Bitcoin's still at $19,238. Um, the market doing absolutely great. Uh, we still haven't really dipped below 19000 too hard. I mean, we did a couple times, uh, but it's just it's just coming right back. So it's a matter of when is it going to break all of those sell walls on the way to 20000 And with the new year, uh, there is some uncertainty with the new year. December is usually kind of a harsh month. So it was January for cryptocurrencies as people are selling it off for the holidays and yada yada. There's, of course, the whole classic conspiratorial uh, lo Chinese Lunar New Year that everybody sells off crypto for. Uh, but it's hard to say now. Uh, if there's a big dip, I think these institutions are going to come along, especially like Grayscale, and is going to go, oh, this is a great opportunity, and they're going to throw a billion dollars at it and buy another billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. So it's going to be hard to actually sell it off. Uh, but moving on to uh, this video here, uh, this is from somebody who just uploaded it, but uh, it's called We're still early uh cnbc hilariously tries to explain bitcoin and they don't get it and i i did watch this <clears throat> i watched it in the background as i was sort of preparing for the video and it, it is glorious it, it's like all these old guys uh, that are trying to figure out why bitcoin has moved up three thousand dollars in just a few months and why it's at this price and why people like it and stuff like that and they do a, a, a miserable job of actually discussing it. And, and I'm not sure why these haven't, I, I mean, I, I know they bring on Anthony Pompliano from time to time, like these media, um, these actual like media, like TV media um, from time to time. But I really think they, they need they need a lot more crypto experts. Um, like even, honestly, like even crypto tubers uh, would, would do a better job of explaining Bitcoin on national television than some of these like stock investors. Sure, these stock investors might know more, you know, than, than most of us in terms of stocks, but they, they simply don't with Bitcoin. I, I also nominate uh, Andreas Antonopoulos to come on all of these networks and actually physically explain Bitcoin at least for a few episodes to get this sort of disseminated a little bit more. But that's all I have for you guys. Uh, just another reminder, uh, give me and send me an email. It's in the description below, Mr. Sacco at Gmail. Uh, 200 plus Sapphire RX 470s for sale um, for cheap, probably. I, I don't know the exact pricing, but I can get you that exact pricing. So if you're interested in a ton of graphics cards, I mean, we're talking a lot of them, right? Like you're, you're going to have some hash rate, you're going to bust out some Raven coin or Ethereum classic or something like that. I don't know, whatever you want to do, but, uh, get a hold of me for that. But, uh, that's all I have for you guys. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Follow all that good stuff, my social media in the description below. And as usual, I will see you guys next time.